What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another video of us continuing the conversation of fighting in MMA. Today, it's going to be all about Dana White and Dana White updates. We're going to be going over his delusional thinking that Power Slap is going to be the next UFC and it is going to overshadow the UFC, why uh, Pereira cannot fight John Jones, and then we're going to be going over who is next in line for the Dreykus and Adesanya fight. So whenever them two fight this weekend over in South Africa, who is going to fight the winner of that. So with that, let's jump right into it, guys. If you appreciate me doing this video, even though I have zero sleep, because my two-year-old now, when he wakes up in the middle of the night in his crib, he likes to stand up and scream, Dada! Dada! Doesn't even cry anymore, just screams my name. Uh, so we are powering through this. Let's go ahead and click play. In a white police power slap will be bigger than the UFC. The UFC president recently appeared on the Full Send podcast, where he and Bob Menery argued whether or not Power Slap will be bigger than the UFC. And I, and I said this before, and I'm going to say it again right now. This will be bigger than the UFC. No f chance. That's I how long? the UFC would be bigger than boxing. No f chance. No, I, said, I, I would be no, way that's what I, I believe the UFC would be bigger no, than boxing. No, you, you, know, I would. No, you wouldn't. Not, because, not that because then you wouldn't. Because there's more variables. There's got to be No bullshit. chance you would have. You that's what I was have, asking. That's you why can't I, have, how can you have something as an average person that turns on the TV and I watch Power Slap? I'll tell you what I do. Okay. I watched match one, and it's the same. I watched match two, it's the same. I watched match three, it's the same. And I watched four, it's the same. Somebody gets slap the face, they're done. That's it. Tell me what. Tell me what's the same about each match you watch. Somebody raises their right hand. They then make direct contact with somebody's face. And then somebody either falls, they don't. That's it. So what happens when you watch a fight? Fight, you Let's can take somebody boxing. down, you can cut somebody's elbow open. There's, Let's say there's it's a boxing match. Boxing, which has been popular for over 100 Years. Because I mean the athletes are obviously I think different. They're throwing the same combinations. I, I'm just saying I can help you. You can't help yourself. You know, help you. Fans of the comments quickly roasted Dana for his comments. Buzzbrands offers a wide variety of high quality, low cost, and low dose THC options. It's made for the functional person who uses THC, whether it's to enhance life for pain or for mood. They have energy drinks, my personal favorite gummy shots and ice creams guys whenever you make a purchase enter bear in the notes on august 25th i'll pick two or three of y'all and we'll send y'all a huge care package of random items from buzz brands guys that's buck a buzz.com enter bear in the notes let's get back to the show i'm gonna stop that right there guys let's go first off there's a couple things that i sec there the first thing is guys boxing is not as popular as what it used to be boxing is a failing sport right now do i absolutely love boxing do i still practice it as an amateur absolutely yes but as it comes to a professional level on the top when it comes to popularity sales and views boxing is just on a decline it's just because they have all these different organizations and stupid business practices and that's why it's failing secondly ufc is or mma as a whole is infinitely more diverse and volatile than power slap i mean first off there's no let's just talk about footwork can you okay imagine someone let's do like a peter yawn you know uh and just peter yawn he doesn't waste any movement when, throw, when someone throws a punch he slips you know but he's not dancing around going crazy and then think about it Israel Adesanya, you know and you know he's fighting kicks he's fighting punches you know and or sean o'malley you know when he's playing basketball Think about that. Just the footwork alone can make a fight different, right? We're not even talking about punching versus kicking. So just striking on its own can be so dynamic and so diverse. And then we also have elbows in there as well, too. Now we haven't even talked about grappling, guys. So if you want to say that MMA is the same, Dana Why I'm so sorry, but you are delusional on that. I think what has happened is that he is getting skewed by the short views. If you know YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, they're all pushing shorts. Who watches shorts? Kids, and then also now the boomer generation, the retired generation on Facebook, right? So it's like kids under the age of, let's say like 21 and lower, and then it's people over 60 and older, or 65 and older, they're the ones watching shorts, pushing shorts, don't either know how to buy a pay-per-view because they're too old, or they can't because they live at their mom's house and don't have a job. So Dana White is looking at the power slap numbers. Oh my gosh, this power slap just got 10 million views. When this UFC finished, let's say uh, the ending of Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad got 100,000 views or 500,000 views. That's because the power slap is a captivating moment every single time because you're probably going to get a knockout because you're standing like that with your chin out. 
getting slapped full force with no defense. So you're gonna have a knockout a lot of the time. So it's just bored people on Instagram, on TikTok, watching knockouts. That's why the numbers are so high. So unless you can figure out how to convert that into more um, streams of revenue, I don't think it's ever going to be big with UFC because y'all haven't even figured out how to do that with the UFC yet. I mean, think about like your fight nights and things like that. Um, so it's just funny to me. As we know, the UFC has been on a decline. Their pay-per-view sales are dropping. Um, Dana White is trying to figure out how to pivot. I think that's why he's branching out and making new companies like buying into the power slap. I'm curious to see what's going to happen next. But, you know, for it to work in the UFC, they're going to have to figure out how to get all that money that they are losing from the pay-per-views, from people streaming it, watching it for free, and how to re-incentivize people to watch the fights or to spend more money to watch the fights. I think a great way would be is to making the barrier for entry cheaper and easier. So instead of you having to have like an ESPN account and all this other BS, you know, like sometimes... What if like you're, what if you just watch my YouTube channel for the first time and I'm like, oh my gosh, Adesanya, Duplessis, Africa, first African fight, you all need to watch it this weekend, but you don't have an ESPN Plus account. You don't even have an ESPN account. So now you get on your TV with your remote, you want to make a new account with your remote clicking, you know, all these little chingaderas, you know? No, you don't want to do that. ESPN, get rid of them. All their contracts are coming up for the UFC, as you know that. I think they're actually coming up next year. Just make it an open platform, like just... You know, like on Roku TV, on Apple TV, just pops up, boop, make it like 25 bucks. I bet you your sales would go through the roof because with a $25 purchase, now all those little kids who are also watching the mommy and daddy's money or just for people who are on the lower social economic scale can now afford and buy into that UFC. Because let me tell you something, as someone who buys every single pay-per-view, even when money wasn't right, I would still buy the pay-per-view to support the fighters. It feels so much better when you buy the pay-per-view and you watch it. And so um, that is my thing on that. Now, let's get into Dana White shutting down John Jones and Pereira. And we'll talk about that um, right after you hear it. Next up, let's take a look at Dana White shuts down John Jones versus Alex Pereira. While Dana White has held out hope that the winner of the upcoming fight between John Jones and Stipe Miocic will stick around for a title unification bout with Tom Aspinall, White made it clear this week that a bout between John Jones and Alex Pereira is off the table. During an episode of the Pat McAfee show, White shut down talk of a Jones Pereira fight after he was asked about the possibility of the pair sharing the octagon. No! Okay. <laughs> that was easy, that was quick. <laughs> oh, that was In response to fans joking about his recent praise of John Jones, White took aim at the internet after confirming that he is aware of the jokes. Well, everybody on the internet's stupid, so. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> anybody who thinks John Jones isn't the pound for pound best fighter in the world should never be discussing fighting ever. Boom! Here, Agreed. in the store. Okay. While the UFC hasn't officially announced the fight, the expectation is that Jones and Miocic will collide at Madison Square Garden in the UFC 309 main event. Next up. If anyone doesn't believe John Jones isn't the pound for pound best fighter in the world, they shouldn't be talking about fighting. Well, Dana White, then maybe I shouldn't be talking about fighting. But let's talk about pound for pound lists. Greatest of all time. There's two different lists. There's active pound for pound and then there's of all time so people who like you know the hall of fame the goat mountain you know and then there's active active pound for pound which means you are fighting you are active versus of all time it can be they used to fought they have been so of this list goat mountain the of all time they have fought or they haven't fought it's just of all time john jones sits on the top of goat mountain probably somewhere right below him this could be, and somewhere probably right next to him, right below him, is GSP, you know what I mean? And uh, obviously Anderson Silva is in talks with that as well too. But John Jones sits at the top of Goat Mountain, at least with Lil Mike Fight Night uh, Studios and Productions. And uh, that's just my personal opinion. Now, when it comes to active P for P rankings, John Jones, maybe you shouldn't even be on there, brother. When was the last time you fought? Yes, you fought Ciro Gone, but you were injured. Do what everyone else has done recently. When they get injured, what do they do? Yuri Prohoshka, Jamal Hill, they relinquish the belt. Relinquish the belt, John Jones. Give it to Aspinall. You have Dana White saying that Tom Aspinall still needs to get some more wins, even though he's already defended his undisputed belt. 
Does that make sense? No, it's because they are too scared. So before Aspinall was popular in the mix and had these wins over his last two fights in the spectacular way he did, he wasn't in the talk of greatest all time. John Jones was to cement his legacy. Francis Nagano was in the PFL. That's never going to happen. What are we going to do? Oh, we got Stipe from five years ago back in the day coming off a knockout loss. Is he the greatest heavyweight of all time? Yes. Remember that hill? This isn't the GOAT of all time, but now we have different categories. The heavyweight hill, you know what I mean? He can sit on top of their Stipe Miocic. He can sit on top of the has-beens for the best heavyweight of all time, specifically in the heavyweight division. So they go ahead and fight him. Before that fight even happened, as you know, it's already been called off due to a pec injury from John Jones. Aspinall now has two amazing wins over one top contender and one veteran Curtis Blades in spectacular fashion. Both were knockouts, both were finishes, both extremely fast. Tom Aspinall is the pound for pound current GOAT heavyweight. John Jones, greatest MMA fighter of all time, whether he's retired or active. Tom Aspinall, most dangerous, active, fighting, pound for pound, best right now. Who's fighting? Who's active? Tom Aspinall's on the top of that mountain. Prove me different. Why are we talking about Tom Aspinall when everyone's talking about, is he going to fight Pereira? Everyone's talking about Alex Pereira. Are they going to fight, guys? That is never going to happen. First off, before the whole Tom Aspinall thing, which is the whole picture I just laid out, Alex's name was in the bucket pool. Maybe you should fight him after Stipe. John Jones, like that might be pretty cool. A guy going for a three-time uh, weight division champion. That's never happened in the UFC. That could be a legacy thing. That was before Tom Aspinall's last two wins. Now that that has happened, Alex Pereira is not the guy John Jones wants to fight in order to continue his legacy. As you know, if John Jones beats Stipe, he either needs to retire or he needs to fight Aspinall. John Jones knows if he fights Alex because he's already getting it for the Stipe fight, he's going to be considered a chicken. Everyone's going to call him a chicken. He also knows if he loses to Tom Aspinall, it will tarnish his legacy. Even though, in my opinion, it will never take him off the top of Goat Mountain. Someone's got to get a lot of title defenses in a lot of spectacular ways. But, uh... It will ruin his, his hopes or his dreams of being the greatest specific heavyweight of all time. And if he was to knock out Tom Aspinall or finish him in some spectacular fashion, probably not knock him out, well, maybe in the fifth round, he does get late round knockouts. But if he was to finish Tom Aspinall, you know, you could start really putting him in that conversation. Because to me, Stipe wasn't fighting people like Tom Aspinall whatsoever. And uh, Tom Aspinall is not something we have ever seen before. I wish Gon wouldn't have chickened out back in the day and ducked Aspinall when he was a contender because I think that would have been a really cool stylistic fight and I think Aspinall would have finished him. But anyways, uh, what is up with just Dana's White's like just disillusion that John Jones, I, I get it for the brand and reputation, like we were talking about Power Slap, the UFC's declining. Put a better face on it, not just what Dana White wants, but listen to the people, which is Tom Aspinall. So with that, we got one more update, and it is going to be who is going to be fighting for sure the winner of Dreykus versus Adesanya this weekend on Saturday. Let's go ahead and click. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Dana White reveals Sean Strickland is fighting winner of Izzy versus DDP. Ahead of this weekend's UFC 305 card in Perth, Dana White has shed some light on the middleweight title picture. Up until now, it was unclear who would get first dibs on fighting the winner of the Drakus Duplessis Israel Adesanya fight, given that both Sean Strickland and Robert Whitaker were on the cusp of a title shot. With Strickland uninterested in a fight against Whitaker to decide the number one contender, the UFC booked the Reaper a fight with Hamza Chimaev at UFC 308, with fans assuming that a win would guarantee Whitaker a crack at the belt. Now, Dana White has revealed that Strickland isn't the odd man out at 185 pounds after all. During an appearance on the Jim Rome show this week, Dana White announced that the winner of this weekend's Duplessis Adesanya fight will in fact defend the title against Sean Strickland. Uh, you know, listen, Sean Strickland right now is the number one ranked middleweight in the world, and the answer is, uh, is yes, is yes. Leading up to UFC 305, DDP weighed in on Strickland being the number one contender, and the idea of a potential rematch between the two if he gets the job done on Saturday night. You know, doing the streaming rematch for me, 
it's it's awesome because people want to see it. So I'm I'm really happy. I'll I'll do that. And now I've been in there with you. And you know the biggest thing about a fight is the surprise factor. And there's no surprise now. Now that uh, right now I know exactly what to do. And this time you finish it. Just start earlier. Despite Strickland being the number one contender, with a win over Hamza Chimaev, expect Whitaker to punch his ticket to a title shot after Strickland. Next up. What's up with this Hamza Chimaev, man? Yes, if you've been following me since I used to film in my, uh, where I would train boxing in my garage, do I have a Hamza Chimaev flag? Absolutely, I thought he was one of the coolest contenders coming up in the sport when he did, but like, what has happened to him? Ever since he missed weight versus Nate Diaz, it's just been like, pshh. Like, who have you fought, brother? Like, who have you fought in the middleweight? Kevin Holland? Kamaru Usman, who, like, short notice, never fought in the middleweight? So how is fighting Hamza give you, a, like, a, a title shot? You know what I mean? Like, fight Shafkat. You know? Uh, I, I don't know. I think it's really funny. Like, Robert Whitaker needs to fight Sean Strickland so they can fight. Like, Robert Whitaker, you've been beat by Israel twice. One time was an awesome finish. And then Dreyfus finished you. So I'm like, how is he even in the talks for a title fight? Robert Whitaker needs a couple of more wins, in my opinion, not over Acosta, but over some hot, like, just get some wins in the top five, maybe two or three more, because you keep losing to these guys. They are your kryptonite, Whitaker. It's okay. You had your run. But for me, I'm just so excited to see Sean get that rematch. Here's the issue with Sean. He doesn't pick up the pace. He's so used to sparring that he can do that weird little Philly shell, you know, and just knock off everything, you know, he even kicks the, you know, he hits down, like, parries the fucking kicks, too. Great defense in that weird little hybrid Philly shell he has, but the thing is, he doesn't pick up the pace till the last 30 seconds to 15 seconds of round five every single fight. That's how it goes. A lot of times, though, as he does that really relaxed, you know, calm Philly shell fucking thing he does, he gets the knockouts just by his timing and feints and defensiveness, and it catches him off guard. And that's usually how he gets his finishes. If he wants to beat Drykus, he needs to have, you know, my coach always tells me, Coach Randazzo over at uh, Randazzo's Boxing, Santo, your will versus his. You know, your will versus his. Yes, is it a fight? Do you need to be technical? Absolutely. But then what happens is you have two guys respecting each other like this the whole time, you know? And they're not doing anything. They're not throwing any punches. You know, they're just they're just standing there, freaking boring. Your will versus his. As you remember, Dreykus said the first two rounds, he played Sean's game. In the third round, he picked it up. And that's when he decisively won those last three rounds. I've watched the fight three times. I thought Sean won twice and Dreykus won once. So very, very, very close fight. I think that should have been an immediate rematch. But I love what the UFC's been doing. It's not giving people immediate rematches after a title defense. Seems that they quit doing that, and Israel Adesanya was the last one, but they still doing it for him. Um, but uh, obviously, Sean is not on the Adesanya boat when it comes to the likings of the UFC. So now, guys, who was going to win Drykis versus Adesanya? What are some things that Adesanya has versus what are some things that Drykis has? So how did Sean Strickland win the Adesanya fight? His coach said Adesanya, I mean, said Strickland, he's snake charming you. Don't listen to it. Don't bite into the feints. He's snake charming you. Sean Strickland continued to put the pressure on him, keep Israel on his back foot, and continue to pummel him with his jab. The, con the consistent pressure, the not biting the feints, and the always throwing a jab was too much for Adesanya. Wasn't used to not having that respect and being the boogeyman of, and also arguably the greatest middleweight or one of the greatest middleweights, depending if you think Anderson Silva is, of all time. I think Israel Adesanya, in my opinion, is the greatest middleweight of all time, especially if he finishes Drykus and then finishes Sean, which I think he might do and have this fire underneath his belly. But Drykus is like a Sean, where he's awkward, he's different, you can't really train for him, except he has more pressure. And he, we used to think he had a cardio issue, but he got his deviated symptoms fixed and it seems that he doesn't have a cardio issue. Does he breathe in his mouth all the time and looks like a great white shark? Yes, but he never stops moving and destroying. So I think Drykus is going to run over Israel Adesanya. I really think that's going to happen. I think Drykus is going to push him up against the cage. I think he's even going to try taking him down. And I think he's going to continue to beat on him because he saw the game plan Sean Strickland did. He said, huh, okay, we saw Sean Strickland. Now, what if we turned up that pace? All five rounds that Sean Strickland did times three for five rounds straight. 
you know, that sounds like finishing Israel Adesanya in the first round. Now, Izzy could have practiced this. He's pretty good on his back foot, but now he's really working on his back foot. He's working on having someone who's continually going to pressure on it. Someone's continually going to throw a punch at him. He's hungry. He's lost the belt. He used to be considered one of the greatest of all time middleweights. He lost his throne, lost a bit of his shine. Maybe it's going to come back that much better. Or now, Drake is he's now champion. He's 30% better. You've heard him talk. He's got that fire under his belly. He wants to fight. Um, Israel Adesanya wants it back. Drykus wants to defend it. Let's go. I cannot wait for this fight. This actually feels like it's going to be an exciting title fight. I love the Edwards versus Bilal fight. Like, don't get me wrong. Everyone was talking crap that it was boring. I thought it was wildly, wildly entertaining. That's just my opinion. But I think this fight is going to be fireworks. I don't think we've had a fight like this in a long time. I am so excited for it. Um, comment down below. Who do you think's going to win? And the last thing is... Alex Pereira, according to Daniel Cormier, I know it's a little sidetracked, but he keeps saying that the UFC is protecting him because he's ducking Uncle Live. And I'm like, wait a minute. Uncle Live's like, yo, I'm going to stri outstrike him. You know, we're going to stand up on the feet. And I'm like, okay. And then everyone's like, Uncle Live's going to finish him on the ground. I'm like, when has Uncle Live won by finish? Except Johnny Walker. And you think Uncle Live is going to knock out Pereira? You think Uncle Live is going to knock out Pereira, who is literally, arguably, one of the best strikers in the world in his weight class, and who has fought strikers, and who's also been caught by the likes of Israel Adesanya, some of the most dynamic strikers in the world at glory kickboxing. Do you think Anka Laev? Okay, and then also, dude, Pereira has fought in grapplers before. Jan was not a finisher, but he was on top of, uh, Jan was on top for like four minutes in like the second round or first round. Didn't get finished. Pereira's getting punched in the head on bottom. Made it work. Every time he's made it work. So I don't think he's ducking Uncle Live. I think Uncle Live isn't a draw. I don't think he has a big enough fan base. And I think he needs one or two more wins just to be a little bit more exciting because it's like, who wants him to be the champion, right? We want exciting, awesome fights. I'm not trying to take away anything from Uncle Live. That's just what I'm trying to say is Alex Pereira right now is the golden goose. He is a cash cow. If the UFC mans up and John Jones mans up. And they're like, all right, fine. You can fight Aspinall. The winner, John Jones versus Aspinall, fights Pereira. That, to me, is a fight I'd want to see all day. Probably not as much as John Jones versus Aspinall, but I'd love to see, like, an Aspinall beating John Jones and then fighting Alex. Leaving it there, guys. If you like this video, got any entertainment out of it, give me a subscribe. It really helps. I didn't post last Monday, so YouTube shot my views down from, like, one to 2,000 down to, like, two views a video trying to grind to get my way back up there. It's amazing what one day will do. September 25th, I'm going to pick one of y'all randomly. I'm going to send you a pack of Pro V1 golf balls with your YouTube handle on it. If you're over the age of 21 and you want to have some fun instead, I'll send you some stuff from Buzz Brands from my sponsors. Visit my links down below for all my sponsors. I love y'all. I'm out. Peace.